right here is my Johnson Sioux bioreactor. I'm going to show you how I built it and how I filled it up and what you're going to get out of it. So I have fresh wood chips along with some other organic matter from my property that will be going into this. You can see I'm loading it up right now with some compost that's already been partially broken down. I'm just trying to get a nice little base started so that way I can get my pipes to stand upright. And I decided I wanted to go add in some of this weeds that I had cut down. So I went down and picked those up in order to put that into my Johnson Sioux bioreactor. So you can see I have the compost in and it's holding the pipes upright along with some wood supports uh, to keep them upright while we're filling it up because they do fall over pretty easily. So right here is some mustard that naturally grows. We had already cut that down and brought it up. And now we're just adding some compost in, uh, keeping, building a nice little base to keep these air tubes upright. Now I'm just adding in some of the weed cuttings and just kind of making a nice little lasagna layer to this system. I'm adding in some nitrogen on top of that compost so that way it can help break down Right here, I'm grabbing some of my compost tea, and I'm gonna go ahead and add that in so that way it can help inoculate this pile with beneficial microbes and really get this pile uh, set off in a good step. Now, I'm also gonna be adding in some other material from around my farm, and I'm gonna add in this fresh sugarcane mulch. I love sugarcane, and I have a nice little area where I'm growing about 20 sugarcane stalks, and they produce a lot of these long green leaves, and then they dry out as the plant continues to grow. So I like to pull those off and um, mulch them up, and then add them to compost or use them for ground cover. I had some sugarcane that split open because we were getting down into some colder temperatures and it caused the sugarcane to split on its side. So I cut those stalks and I ran them through the wood chipper and it, it made this really nice uh, mulch. And now I'm just slowly working my way up, filling this thing up with more weeds on top of this compost and that's what I'm going to do until I get it all the way to the top. The reason why I like to compost some of my material before I put in the Johnson Sioux bioreactor is because I've already made one of these before and I know by using fresh horse manure and beer grain along with wood chips and everything else my pile was in that 140 to 160 degree range for about two and a half months. And I felt like uh, it was staying too hot for too long, even though it was killing off a lot of the bad pathogens and any weed seed, it, it seemed as though uh, I wasn't gonna get as much fungally dominant um, growth in my 
pile. So that's why I like to compost my hot nitrogen organic matter first, let it cook down just a little bit, and once it starts to cool down just a little bit, then I like to add it into my reactor. So that way it has already gotten rid of some of that nitrogen. It'll mix in with more of the carbon material and then that will allow it to uh, break down by the microorganisms faster. So right here, I also have some biochar that I had run through my wood chipper and I also used uh, some mulch that was older and had started to break down. So it was almost compost level, but not quite there. With both of them being mixed together, you get this really nice material that almost looks like compost, but it has all of that charcoal in there that's becoming biochar. And of course I want to add that in because biochar has so many benefits for your soil. So allowing the compost to break down for a year and build all those beneficial microbes and fungi with it also having biochar in it, that means it's going to give it a better home to root itself into. And when I put that out into my soil, it will continue to give them a habitat to hold on to as they're in the soil so that way they can continue keeping the soil healthy. So we're just mixing it into the compost that we're gonna load into the wheelbarrow to take over to the reactor. Biochar really is such a great thing to add to your soil. It, it can do so many different things that it, it really seems as though there's only benefits to adding it. And I don't really see any major withdrawals to having biochar in your soil. So right here, I'm putting down mulch in between my layers. This is that sugarcane mulch that I made. So there's a little bit of nitrogen in there, but there is a lot of carbon. So that's going to be a good feed source for the fungi that are in the reactor or that will grow over the next year in the reactor. And then we just continue adding more compost and then putting more mulch. And we're just gonna continue that all the way up into until we fill up the reactor all the way. So I've now put down my compost from my other Johnson Sioux bioreactor and now I'm just putting on that final layer of mulch because I want to protect it from the sunlight because the sunlight will cause or all the UV rays from the sunlight will end up killing off any beneficial microbes that are in that compost. So by adding that mulch we're going to help keep the microbes safe from the sunlight and we're also going to help with water retention. So here is the final reactor with the pipes sticking out of it. And those are gonna sit for about a week or two, depending on how much the compost pile settles. But once it's settled a little bit, and I know it's not going to drop a lot, then you can go ahead and remove those pipes because you don't want to remove them too soon because if you do, there's a chance that they will cave in on themselves and then you won't have those air holes. Those air holes are important because they create all of that, they allow all that airflow to happen and that allows it to be aerobic and you have lots of fungi and bacteria growing because of that. This is the pallet that my reactor is sitting on. 
I also ran some wire mesh on the bottom to stop any animals or anything getting up into the pile. And then you can see where I banded my cattle panel together on the corners. I just uh, took some hog clips and pressed it on each ring so that way it held it tight and I don't have to worry about the weight of this and the pressure pushing this uh, the panel open and then my my reactor falling apart. I also used uh, some four feet wide weed fabric and the panel in total is 16 feet so I needed about 16 feet of the weed fabric to fully enclose my bioreactor. And you wanna keep it on the inside because it's pressing outward and that way you don't have to worry about any of your material working its way out. So that's it. This is how I built my Johnson Sioux bioreactor. And I'm gonna go ahead, remove those poles. Once that's done, I'm gonna leave this alone and just let it sit for a year. And over that period of time, it's gonna go ahead and start developing a lot of really beneficial microbes for your soil. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.